from sarahrolling.com, just going up a service lift to the uh, early day job um, at night. Um, and I wanted to just leave a bit of value in terms of the only thing left in terms of you being a sound recordist, um, especially if it's more content and things like that, is actually you yourself. The only thing's really left around. And so with that, essentially, as uh, things go on more and more, is uh, that you're going to see more and more commoditization, I guess, is the technical term for it. Um, so what that means is that basically all your skills, uh, much like if you're, um, I don't know, before when you had to be a taxi driver in London, you had to do things like the knowledge and then you had to buy the specific black cab. And now basically you can just have a car and an app and then that's it. And then it's all basically down to you to keep up your five stars, as it were. Um, and so that's exactly what's going to happen to absolutely everything else in the world, as obviously there are more people. Um, but at the same time, there's also more content. Uh, so then it just becomes a game of you finding out the content and things that you want to work on. Again, I say content, but that can obviously be uh, a generalization for any sort of um, project that you want to work on. Basically, now everything is content. Uh, regardless of how fancy you dress it up. And uh, personal branding, as it were, is essentially just your reputation. All these people that uh, basically bang on about, um, obviously, personal branding is rubbish and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's quite easy for people to say that if they're winning Oscars and stuff like that, because that's exactly what branding is. So let me just like cut this short because this is getting a bit kind of ranty. Um, essentially, the main things that you need to do are as quickly as possible get to the basics. Everyone's got the basics. So this is like the first 90, 95% of the actual gig, which is turning up, uh, probably living fairly close uh, to a location that has lots of work, having uh, equipment or access to equipment, because again, you can go more down the rental route. Um, I've done videos on, on why and what I did. Um, and then once you have that 95%, literally, uh, it then flips because you go into a different market of actually uh, being able to provide services very similar to most of the other people in the market. And so that uh, kind of last 5% becomes the next 95% in terms of you getting rehired, uh, getting hired in the first place. And again, because you can make a website, because you can go on social media, because you can post useful content, um, you can do exactly the same as what I did and I encourage you all to do, um, whether you're that way or not. Um, through podcast, written, video, that kind of thing. Uh, demonstration of knowledge is basically instilling trust. And then basically, if you're not a dick, um, it's very easy to get rehired and work on lots of stuff, uh, depending on whatever you want to work on. Um, you obviously have to get along with people. You have to understand how to do stuff. Uh, but generally, if you're just very uh, kind of relaxed and take a more broader approach to how you're achieving your sound, and it's not just all about your department and, oh, there's, um, there's this noise in the background that I can't get out and there's no post-production budget. Um, it's just being able to sensibly kind of scale your stuff. And I realized that I've also been walking around a lot in this video, so a lot of people are going to be dizzy, but hopefully that uh, rounds things up. The most important thing for you to build after actually getting some uh, recording equipment or finding out where to rent some recording equipment is obviously to practice your craft relentlessly all the time until you feel you're up to a very decent standard. And then it's all down to your actual personality traits and how much you're willing to work in terms of getting work. Realistically, if um, in London we take an average of maybe five to six hundred pounds a day with kit for basic kind of corporate content stuff, and we say that in London, I don't know, even if you're in a two if you're in a two bed place because uh, you're fancy, obviously you could be alone. But let's say you have a partner, and you're splitting rent, probably got about maybe a thousand, two thousand of expenses a month. So realistically, if you're gonna live on the edge, uh, you're going to find two days of work. Um, and then um, if you want a cheeky Nando's, stuff like that, then it will cost you a bit more. So out of maybe five days, if you really want to take it slow and relax, um, then you can essentially build that up with uh, 
basically spending the other 26 days making content, um, getting to know people and solve other people's problems, uh, maybe even for free sometimes. I know a dirty word, this free thing, um, but think of it more as an exchange of value. Another thing that I'll throw in there is just imagine that every single person that you work with over the span of your career uh, it could be worth fifty thousand pounds as a as a ballpark figure. Um, obviously, it depends on the amount of projects, etc. Um, but if you use that as a ballpark, and obviously some people will be terrible, and you'll never want to work with them again. Some people will find you terrible, and they never want to work with you again. Um, but out of all of that, then you are at least left with the right intent in terms of making really good work, in terms of uh, treating everyone um, with some actual decent value, as if they've you're not just there for yourself and for your sound showreel or whatever uh, sound recorders I'm going to have. And that is just a lot of random thoughts on a Friday night as I get working um, on the second side hustle. So until next time, leave comments below and I will see you later.